Hello, in this video I'm going to share how I went from scoring 153 on my NBME to 249 on my actual USMLE Step 1 exam. This video has been created to help others learn from my journey. I'm going to talk to you a bit about my background, a timeline of my assessments, resources I found useful, the costs of the resources and the actual exam, and some do's and don'ts. This shows a photo of my step one score. So a bit about myself. I am a graduate from a UK medical school. I am a non-US IMG. I took my step one exam almost three years after completing medical school. This is a long time after I had studied the material being tested in step one in my medical school. I was working part-time for three months in internal medicine, pediatrics and teaching medical students. I spent the two months just before my exam as dedicated study. If you want to get somewhere, you first need to know where you are. And this is perhaps the most important step of your journey. Start by doing a baseline NBME. I used NBME 19 as my baseline test and scored 153. As you can see, I was pretty far off my goal of 240 and the pass mark of 194. Most people start off with a pretty bad score and uh, don't worry about it. I thought to myself, it can only get better from here, right? And as many people say, make the mistakes now so you don't make them on exam day. Now I'm going to talk to you about the timeline of my assessments. This shows how I scored in different assessments I used to measure whether I was on track for my step one journey. I did assessments regularly, starting off by doing roughly once a month and then the last two months before my exam, I was doing one assessment every week. I used all the available NBMEs to me, UL self-assessment 1 and 2, free 120 questions and the official USMLE website, and Kaplan 1 and 2. This table shows those assessments and the timeline and my scores. And I found that the most predictive assessments for me were NBMEs, the free 120 and the UL self-assessment I did very close to my exam. Now I'm going to share with you my top resources. There are well-known resources, such as UWorld, which is, I feel is the best question bank, Anki, and a great app which can be used to on your phone or your laptop for better retention using spaced repetition, Pathoma for helping understand concepts, First Aid for high yield information, and Sketchy Micro, which I found useful to tackle my weak area in microbiology. Some of the less known resources include benwhite.com. Ben White shares explain, explanations for all free questions on official USMLE website and shares tips and advice on step one. USMLE.com, I came across this website from someone who scored 270 on the step one exam and they share their journey with Anki and you can also buy pre-made Anki decks from his website. I also found his blog very useful and he gives great advice on exams. Let's talk a little bit about costs now. Before I begin, please note the cost does not include the cost of living, such as the rent or mortgage you might be paying, food, utilities and social outings. First, you need to register and that costs $75 before you can apply for any, any step exams. The actual step one exam itself at the time I was applying cost $910 plus $185 for doing it in Europe. And if you reschedule your exam close to the exam date, there are extra charges for that too. This shows the resources I used. I ended up paying $1,443 for that. I got a 12-month subscription of UWorld. I did all the six NBMEs, which were $60 each. Pathoma, six-month subscription. Sketchy Micro, six-month subscription. Pre-made Anki deck from usmle.com. First Aid, BRS Physiology, Kaplan Question Bank, and Golian Textbook. I also did the practice test at the Prometric Center and this costs a bit more money but it's in good investment and I'll talk to you more about that later. So the total cost was $2,839 for the resources and the actual step one exam. Again, please note this doesn't include the cost of living. Some of you might be thinking $2,839 and we only cleared step one. Now let's talk to you about the do's and don'ts do's first. Number one, know yourself and set a goal. Number two, active learning versus passive learning. 
Active learning examples include doing a question bank, doing NBME or UL self-assessments, doing Anki or flashcards, teaching medical students. Passive forms of learning include reading first aid, watching videos, listening to Golian audio, or reading step one forums. Whilst both methods are possible, I have found from my experience that active learning methods increase my ability to retain information and apply them. Number three, look after yourself physically and mentally. If you don't, it might hurt your score and it might hurt you as well. I joined a running club and regularly did Headspace, which is a self-guided meditation app, and I found both of those helpful in keeping me mentally and physically well. Number four, book your exam date and don't be afraid to change it. Once you have booked your exam date, you will feel committed and you won't need as much motivation. Commitment is stronger, I feel, than motivation. Once you have an exam date, you can schedule your self-assessments, when you're going to do your NBMEs, your UL self-assessments, and also know roughly a timeline of how many resources you need to cover in what time frame. And things are going to get real. Number five, do a practice test at the Prometric Centre. Like I said before, this does cost more money, but it's worth the experience. You will see what it feels like to turn up to your exam, to go through security on each break, what snacks keep you alert and focused, and planning logistics like transport to and from the test centre. Now let's talk to you about some don'ts. Don't get distracted. I made a point to remove WhatsApp initially from my phone. I told my friends and family that I have an important exam, and I remembered the famous saying by Dr. Zeus, be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't, don't mind. Number two, don't spread yourself over too many resources. There are many things I bought that were not helpful, such as a Golian textbook, and I didn't personally find the Kaplan questions too useful for me. Number three, don't compare yourself with others. Compare yourself with yourself. Everyone is on their own journey, and you should focus on yours. You can use other people's experiences to help form your own decisions, but remember, you know what's best for yourself, and what works for someone may not be possible for you. For example, you may have a family, you may still be working, you may not have a lot of money to buy too many resources, and you may not have enough time. I remember comparing my first UWorld Pass percentage with other people and estimating how I fall compared to others. This just built on my anxiety and added unnecessary stress. Number four, don't make unrealistic study schedules. Let's go into a bit more detail here. So we all know that 24 hours in the day, of which you'll be sleeping for roughly 8 hours, which leaves you 16 hours. Of which you'll be eating 3 meals, having snacks, preparing food, clearing up after yourself. So, so give yourself 4 hours for that, leaving you 12 hours. Then things like I said before, looking after yourself, exercise, meditation, going to the shower, toileting. Give yourself 2 hours a day for that, which leaves you 10 hours. And then of those 10 hours, when you're studying, you might be taking breaks every hour for 10 to 15 minutes. So actual study time is close to 8 hours of study every day. I would also advise keeping one day off a week to relax and catch up. And this is good to refresh yourself and recharge yourself because the step 1 exam, when you are preparing for it, it takes uh, a lot, of, lot out of you. And it's good to have something to recharge the batteries. Number 5. Don't miss twice. This is specific for Anki. So when you get familiar with what Anki is and you start using it, be sure to review, review your Anki cards for the day and don't miss a day. Missing a day will mean reviewing more cards and adding a strain to the rest of your schedule. I remember when I was going through Anki, my mind would always want to learn new things and it was a struggle to get through Anki cards some days, but I stuck with it. So thank you for reaching this far. To summarize, I've talked about my background I'm a non-US IMG who did my Step 1 exam three years after completing medical school. I shared a timeline of my assessments, how I went from scoring 153 on my first NBME exam to 249 on my actual Step 1 exam. I've shared with you the, with you the resources I've used, some well-known and some less well-known. I've shared the cost of the resources and the actual exam itself, some do's and some don'ts. I hope you guys do great in your exams. I hope you reach your goals. I hope you the best of luck. I wish you the best of luck. Please smash the exam. And I know doing step one can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. 
Enjoy that you are learning to ultimately help patients. Thank you for your time. If you like the video, please give me a like. If you don't like the video, please dislike and share a comment. And uh, peace out.